With Zooks arriving on the scene in Las Vegas, we now have three visions for the RoboTaxi future. In other words, we have Zooks versus Tesla versus Waymo. Let's score them zero to two points in several categories and crown a winner for the RoboTaxi future. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I thought I would do a scorecard for these three differing visions for the future of autonomous driving. As you can see, there are eight categories from backing to coverage to the tech stack to driverless status to safety to economics and scaling to future products prospects and the passenger experience and at the end we will crown a winner for now and look at the future. So first things first, who is backing each of these? Tesla of course obviously is backing their own robo taxi experience. Waymo is backed by Google and Zooks is backed by Amazon. So all three of these potentialities have massive backing. They have a lot of money on the order of billions of dollars behind each of them. So with that being said, I think we can count that a tie. I think that Tesla, Waymo and Zooks all get 2 points because they all have massive backing. Next up is is the coverage area. Zooks is clearly behind in this case. They just started their first pilot program in Las Vegas, and I'm going to be there in about a month and a couple of weeks, so I'm looking forward to giving it a try on the Las Vegas Strip. But basically, their entire coverage area is the Las Vegas Strip. Waymo, on the other hand, has Phoenix, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and that area, and Austin, Texas, and several more that they have in their sites, including Atlanta, Georgia, which hopefully will come relatively soon. And of course, the Tesla Robo Taxi has Austin and also the San Francisco Bay Area. If you compare the Austin geofenced area for Waymo and Tesla, they're relatively similar, but Tesla has a massive geofenced advantage in the Bay Area. So for coverage, clearly Waymo is in the lead right now. They get two. Tesla is behind them in terms of total square mileage covered, but they are growing very, very quickly and they have a massive advantage in the Bay Area. So I'm going to give them two as well. Next up, we have the tech stack. Zooks is a purpose-built pod with no driver's seat or really an identity identifiable front or back. They don't even have a steering wheel and their system comes with cameras, but also radar and LIDAR. So of the three vehicles currently on the road, they are definitely the most interesting and out there. Waymo's quote vision for autonomous driving is very, very sensor heavy. They have vision, they have radar, they have LIDAR, they have redundant systems, they have HD maps that they work within. And clearly given the fact that they've been around for so long, they are also the most proven system out there. At least if you think of autonomous taxis by themselves. Tesla, of course, famously is vision only. They don't use radar, they don't use LIDAR, they don't even use ultrasonics or anything like that. They stripped all of that stuff away several years ago and rely completely on vision and synthetic radar. They of course have over-the-air updates and the ability to scale out to tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of vehicles since every Tesla that comes off the line has all of the equipment necessary to be a robo-taxi. And of course, while Tesla's robo-taxi is relatively recent to the scene, Tesla has been producing cars with first hardware 3 and now AI4 chips in the vehicles for about seven years. So even though their robo-taxi fleet is relatively young, their tech stack is really, really mature. Therefore, in terms of scoring, I have to give Tesla a 2, a Waymo a 2, and Zooks a 1. I personally believe that Tesla has a better tech stack than Waymo because of its robustness and scalability, but we will get to that in just a minute. You know, my life is pretty full on. Between teaching, running my AI company, making these videos, and keeping up with Tesla and robotics news, my brain just doesn't want to switch off at night. And honestly, as I've gotten older, falling asleep and actually staying asleep has become more of a challenge. That's why I'm really glad AG1 came out with something new, AGZ. It's their nightly drink designed to support restful, restorative sleep without melatonin. Instead, it uses clinically studied adaptogens, herbs, and minerals to support your body's natural sleep cycle. Here's what I love. It works in three stages. First, winding down with things like L-theanine and ashwagandha to help me relax and manage stress. Then while I'm sleeping, AGZ includes magnesium and calming herbs to support high quality restorative sleep. And finally, when I wake up, this is the key part, I don't feel groggy. Antioxidants like saffron help me wake up feeling refreshed and ready to dive straight into the next Tesla RoboTaxi update or AI experiment. And AGZ is super easy too. Simply mix it in with warm water or milk and drink it an hour or so before bed. I personally love the chocolate mint flavor. It's rich and chocolatey without any added sugar. A perfect end to my day. For me, AG1 owns my mornings and now AGZ is a big part of my nighttime routine. It's NSF certified for sport, melatonin free, and super easy to integrate into my life. So if you want to turn down the stress and focus on the rest, head to drinkag1.com slash Dr. Noah 
all, or just scan the QR code on the screen. With your first purchase of AGZ, you'll even get a free frother. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring today's video, and now let's get back to it. Next up is the driverless status. So Tesla, of course, still has safety monitors in the vehicle in both San Francisco and in Austin. So of course they get a ding for that. And of course, Waymo has no safety drivers or safety passengers in their vehicles in most of their mature markets. And Zooks doesn't even have a steering wheel or anything. So they, by default, do not have any safety monitors. Thus, at least for now, Tesla gets a zero on this because they still have safety monitors in their vehicles and Waymo and Zooks both get twos on that. Then we get to safety. Waymo claims 96 million driverless miles. That is a lot of miles actually, and they have a very good track record for safety. Tesla also apparently has a very good track record both in Austin and the San Francisco Bay Area, but at present, at least as far as I know, we don't have a lot of data on this, so I'm going to have to give them a little bit of a ding. Number one, for the fact that they've just been on the road for a lot less time than Waymo, but also for the fact that we don't know a lot of the data, we don't have anything published from them. Again, if I'm wrong, definitely let me know in the comments. I can change the grading. And then as for Zooks, it's only been on the road for a couple of weeks now, in fact, maybe only a week, and they've already had to do to a recall. And of course, they haven't proven anything yet because they're just barely on the road. So currently, at least they get a zero for safety. So Tesla gets a one, Waymo gets a two, and Zooks gets a zero. I think that Tesla could easily get a two at some point in the near future. But at least at present, I have to give the nod to Waymo just because they have more driverless miles on the road at this point and have some data that's actually published. Next up, we get to economics and scaling, and clearly here, Tesla has a huge advantage. Waymo is expensive. They have expensive hardware. They have HD mapping that they have to do around a given area before they can geofence it off and allow the cars to drive. And of course, the consequence of this is that they are much slower at scaling. Zooks, of course, is brand new. Their vehicles are custom designed and custom made. They're not off-the-shelf vehicles. They have the same LiDAR and radar and expensive additions into the vehicle. And also because it's custom made and brand new, it has to cost a great deal of money to produce each one of their vehicles. And then of course, Tesla has millions of these vehicles already on the road, and they can churn out thousands more per week to dedicate to the robo-taxi fleet if they want to. And of course, they will be building a dedicated cyber cab that won't even have a steering wheel. For now, however, we're grading it on the present, which is the Model Ys, which are repurposed. But the fact that Tesla can produce basically as many of these vehicles as they want to for the purpose of robo-taxi means that their scalability is just through the roof. So in terms of scaling, Tesla gets a two, Waymo gets a one just because they've been around longer and they are actually producing, you know, on the order of a thousand cars and stuff. And Zooks gets a zero. Next, we get to future prospects. For Zooks, you've got a potential logistics tie-in with Amazon Prime, Amazon Delivery. In other words, these vehicles could be used to deliver packages to your home in addition to driverless cab rides and things like that. So that's a great pivot and would actually drive a lot of adoption in terms of the number of vehicles that Amazon can justify producing through Zooks. Of course, the risks are that this pod design is brand new. They don't know what they don't know at this point. And so the rollout may go much, much slower than they expect. As for Waymo, you've got a steady safety first expansion and they're doing really well in premium metro areas. But the problem is that their rollout is very, very slow. Their vehicles are expensive. Again, they're custom designed, so they're slow to build. They have to do HD mapping to go into any new area. So that takes a lot of time and effort. And so there's a very, very slow rollout and a very high hardware cost. So they're doing better than Zooks just because they've been around longer, but it is still a slow rollout. As for Tesla, if their vision only strategy pans out and it looks like it's panning out, they essentially can turn on as many vehicles as they want to overnight on the order of hundreds of thousands or millions if they want to. So of course the risks for Tesla are still that they're using safety monitors in the vehicles right now. They haven't been able to get away from that. So they need to get regulatory approval, which means they need to prove their safety. But once they can do that, they can actually expand exceptionally rapidly into any area that will allow them to go. In fact, I wouldn't even be surprised to see them in Las Vegas relatively soon, since Zooks has proved out that market. Tesla might just go like, well, heck, let's go there and let's try that out. So in terms of future prospects, I will go ahead and give Zooks a one because probably it can scale about the same speed as Waymo. So both of those get a one and Tesla clearly gets a two because they're far and away the winner. 
And then finally we get to passenger experience. I'm going to give Zooks a little bit of credit here because I find their vehicle design really interesting. I think that the Tesla Cybercab would give them a good run for their money without the steering wheel and with the big display, but of course that's not available right now. And currently you have to sit in the back seat of the Tesla Model Y, which isn't quite as comfortable as the front seats. So again, all of this stuff will change over time. But in terms of the current solutions, I would say that Zooks is clearly better. It's just a more interesting thing where you you sit and you can talk to other people and you're facing them. You're not stuck in a all facing forward traditional car sort of situation. Will that work well on long road trips on the highway? I'm not so sure. I think people might get car sick, but at least in a city taxi sort of situation, it's pretty good. And as far as Waymo is concerned, I think Waymo is relatively the same as Tesla in terms of the passenger experience at this point. So Tesla and Waymo both get one and Zooks gets a two in this category. So at least it wins in one category. All right. So where does that leave us? Drum roll, please. There you go, Zooks gets an eight, Tesla gets a 12, and Waymo, for right now at least, squeaks by with a 13. If we revisit this in six months, which I plan to do, I have a feeling that Tesla is going to be well ahead by at least two or three points by that point over Waymo, and Zooks is probably gonna be right around where it is currently, because I think that Tesla is going to expand very, very rapidly. But for right now, Waymo is still just squeaking by in the lead with Tesla nipping at its heels, and of course, Zooks is not really a threat to either of them at this point, given the fact that it's just a tiny little geofenced area, almost a toy problem because the Las Vegas Strip is so slow and so straight that it's a relatively easy job, except for avoiding all of the humanity there, all of the traffic jams, all of the people crossing the streets, all of that kind of stuff. But in terms of complexity and geofencing, clearly Zooks is behind and has a long way to go to catch up, while Tesla, even though it is pretty darn new, I mean, it was only June 22nd when they released the first RoboTaxi rides, and if you haven't caught that, I did my first RoboTaxi ride that day. You can check that out up here. But even though it only started less than three months ago, it's basically almost caught up to Waymo already. So that is very impressive. Alrighty, folks, let me know what you think about my scoring in the comments. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think that any of them should have gotten more or fewer points? Definitely let me know. Just be nice about it. You don't have to agree with me, but just be constructive about it. While you're down there, if you don't mind liking the video, it really, really helps out. And consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. And finally, a huge thank you to AG1 and AGZ for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to check out their link in the description or scan the QR code, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.